Welcome to CompSpark. Today we are in Cincinnati, Ohio. My name is Pat Haller, and I will be your guest host today. I'd like to welcome our guest, Alejandro Meraro, Senior Vice President and CIO at Standard Aero. Alejandro, thanks, thanks for being here today. Yeah. So, you know, digital transformation, you know, pace of technology change, um, the degree in which it's permeated organizations all up and down um, every level of the, the, the organization. You know, that's obviously had an impact on a number of things. And, a lot of these same factors, you know, have prompted change within the ranks of IT, um, you know, and as an organization and the legacy applications infrastructure have given away to cloud, SaaS, you know, everything as a service, um, you know, platform or service. So what, what changes have taken place or, you know, maybe you've considered in your IT organization? Yeah, sure. It's been quite an accelerated pace. One of the things that uh, we have observed is that most of the innovation is happening nowadays when it comes to a software as a service. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's essentially where new capabilities are getting introduced. So as organizations that have been established for quite some time, it's, it requires a focus and attention to be able to create the new skill set to mm -hmm. understand where innovation is happening, where, where we can actually make a difference, and reskills and learn on how to go faster in the market. I've seen over the past few years where IT organizations have been so focused, so heads down with all the big ERP or yep. other transactional uh, areas and falling behind particularly. Mm -hmm. And then when IT has not been involved, all the organizations have been managing to introduce those new software as a services, yep. whether we are part of it or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, we realize that it's, it's part of a new trend. From a platform as a service, it's growing drastically to the point that it's becoming more and more mature, but also has fragmented quite a way. There are managed hosting providers mm -hmm. uh, left and right. So that's an area that we have looked at further to make sure that we don't necessarily make some mistakes, having a good architecture, a good understanding on where do we want to be mm -hmm. in a way that we don't enter into a situation that, that we may regret down the road. But I think that uh, across the board, I'm seeing in particular in my organization, mm -hmm. realizing that this is an area that needs more and more attention and, and the companies that are innovating today, these are small companies, right. they're gonna be the big dominant players tomorrow and they have not seen any different, right? Right. This is where, where they're gonna grow. Okay, great. And, and, and you know, as a, as a leader, you know, in, in your company, and uh, you know, how, do you, how do you interact or how do you work with leadership from other functional mm -hmm. areas, um, you know, inside the business, you know, amid all these, these changes and, and all the transformation going on in, in, in the organization. Well, in particular with Standard Aero, I'm lucky that the executive leadership team, they're very, very collaborative. Okay. They see IT as a game-changing function in terms of to be able to accomplish what they need to do with target growth, margins, so on and so forth. So I'm in a situation that if I need to make a quick phone call, have a tough discussion heart to heart about a situation that we need to address, or an initiative that uh, needs to have uh, the digital transformation as well as business operations well ingrained, it's happened, it's recognized, it's taken some time to get there, mm -hmm. but I think it's an area that when an organization is undergoing a massive growth and essentially sometimes not so evident in terms of how you're gonna get there, mm -hmm. they realize that IT needs to be part of it. The other area that I always look to implement and, and I've done some organizational changes to that is moving IT from the classical corporate type organization into yeah. being more embedded with the business operations. Okay. So I have leaders in my organization that work directly with the presidents okay. for all the various sectors, and they're able to identify where are we supposed to be two, three years down the road, and articulate what is the IT strategy behind that. Okay. So we're being able to tell them, here's what needs to happen, mm -hmm. rather than just sit back and wait for those ideas when it is too late. So otherwise, we'll be learning about the, the challenges in the 11th hour. Okay. Fantastic. So, and actually, you kind of you beat me to the punch on, on one of the next questions. Yeah. Is you know, as things are, are you know, this digital transformation is going on. You know, how are you aligning your organization more to you know business objectives? How is technology supporting you know business objectives and um, you know, working more working more from you know just keeping the lights on to more uh, a truly a partner in the business and, and creating function and value in the business? Is there have there been some examples that you, you could share with us sure. just in terms of where you've, you've had some success with that? Sure, what I normally do is that I have introduced it as part of the annual operating plan. Mm -hmm. When we looked at where are the revenue path for the business, product lines, mm -hmm. site expansion, potential 
environment when it comes to business development and, and being able to see, okay, where, where are we going to see the challenge? Is it essentially efficiency in the operations? Is it going to be because now we're going to be in new markets that we've never been before? Mm -hmm. uh, is it essentially just a cost uh, component with uh, some of the margins that happens? Sure. And take those early signals to have candid discussions with the leadership team to say, what do we need to do differently here? Mm -hmm. What do we need to recognize and look around the corner? in a way that we can come back and have a number of cycles and conversations with sales team, finance team, quality teams, engineering, and come down to a much better understanding of where does it matter that we spend our time, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes it may be because there is a direct financial benefit for that, but in so many other instances, because if we don't do, we're just gonna fail to deliver good product to the customers on time right. with quality. So after we go those couple cycles and we marry it with the financial operating plan, and we're able to understand our cost structure. Then we do another round of revisions when it comes to sector presence, they have discussions with the CEO, mm -hmm. and mature it to the point that now we're ready to continue to slow it down to the organization. I actually expect that everybody in IT have clear visibility to that, they paste that page next yep. to their cubicle, and figure it out how am I working rolls up to that strategy. Okay. Along the way, things have changed mm -hmm. as priorities, whether it is product lines, that uh, gets needs to be accelerated. Some others that perhaps uh, to market that we thought that we were going to be in, but we're not. Mm -hmm. uh, but then continuously, in fact, on a monthly basis, we're revising all those priorities and understand is there something that is changing in front of us that we haven't identified that we need to go ahead and, and do that. So that continuous loop works quite well. But it is important that that innovation happen at every level in the organization that they know what is it that they're doing mm -hmm. that actually helps okay. embrace that change. Great. And also, you know, one, one of the other things that, that I think, you know, a lot of change going on, just, you know, compliance, hmm. security, risk, whether it's HIPAA, sure. GDRC, you know, any number of things. Are, are you guys at Standard Arrow, are you subject to, you know, any specific regulations and things oh, that you do? And then, you know, from, from that perspective, what advice would you give folks that are maybe newer to that space or newer to some of the, the new regulations um, that are kind of being forced hmm. upon folks? I, I think about it every day, is that whether it is compliance because of regulatory environment, mm -hmm. or even risk because of some of the potential penalties or, or assessments that could happen due to right. a data breach or, 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 or information that, uh, that gets in the wrong hands. The way that I position and, and the advice that I give everyone is one, don't ignore it. Mm -hmm. Is that if it doesn't get addressed now, mm -hmm. it gets harder and harder every year. You can't, it's you can't a, just stick your head in the sand? It, 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 it is not. It just gets harder because the, the, the process gets more convoluted. And something that I have learned is that getting help externally have been a quite significant improvement because these regulations are very, very difficult. They continue evolving. There are different interpretations. And we have found that when we look at someone that's been there, done that, can mm -hmm. actually, so to speak, handhold you right. and take you through the most optimal path to get there to mitigate the level of risk. Uh, rather than spinning your wheels for months and then realizing that you have not made uh, much progress. And we understand that arrow is that several regulations that, uh, that apply to us, some are mm -hmm. more critical than others, but all in all, there has to be a good, uh, uh, well-established uh, posture in place okay. to f make sure that we can actually continue servicing our customers. Okay. And, and, and you kind of alluded to it, Alejandro, you know, as you... As you know, as IT focuses more on, on core business functionality and maybe gets away from some of the um, the day to day operations, you know, what what kind of role have, have maybe third parties or partners um, played, you know, in terms of, of helping you, you know, achieve your goals or potentially offloading some things that maybe aren't a core competency, so you can focus on your business objectives. But, but very self organization for for us as standard arrow is that we we looked at what are the key areas that we need to innovate along mm -hmm. the way versus what are the areas that we need to improve when it comes to operational excellence, right? Okay. Nowadays, kind of business operations starts taking IT for granted, yep. right? Things got to work. Otherwise, yep. we're not able to get products out of the door. So those things have to be well managed operationally. Mm -hmm. And it makes some of those decisions where we say, hey, well, I need help here because simply I don't know how to do it. 
and I need to do some staff augmentation mm -hmm. so I can actually learn right. and even get faster over there. Or some of the other areas that we do quite well or perhaps need some improvements to say, hey, there could be somebody coming at scale mm -hmm. that I can go ahead and, uh, and bring some help. I'm not the kind of believer that it's just simply go ahead and blindly take everything that is more routine or operations that outsource it right. because it could actually get worse sometimes if you're not doing properly. Right. You got a team that is lean, that is efficient, that knows what they're doing, that loves and have a passion for the customer, then perhaps it's okay to do it. But we have found a good sweet spot on each of the areas, whether it is on innovation or whether it is on the actual operations, mm -hmm. to say, here I can get some help and some of the areas um, I can keep it in-house. I do always strive, though, to make sure that we're not looking for help just simply because we never want to learn how to right. do something, right? Is that they, there is a degree of intellectual property and capabilities that we sure. have to maintain in house okay. all over time. Has there been any specific examples or areas where, where you have leveraged um, maybe folks from the outside or outside expertise to maybe take over something that, that um, you need to learn more about or maybe you don't have the skill sets to, uh, to execute on? It happens uh, typically whether it is on the compliance space, okay, right, whether it is from firms that uh, have deep expertise on the legal side. Um, also as well in the cybersecurity area, yep. when we're looking about in terms of the best ability to find vulnerabilities right. or, or any even particular issues. Uh, we're also seeing in terms of some of the project execution, in terms of uh, data migration, as okay. well as infrastructure uh, transition along the way. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Alejandro, thank mm -hmm. you very much for, for being on the program. It was a pleasure talking yeah. with you and uh, good luck and, and congratulations on the award. Yeah, thanks so much. I would like to thank Alejandro Mayoro for joining us today and for those listening to the interview, to learn more, go to comspark.tech.